Today, we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams breakout rooms. They are a great option to let your meeting participants collaborate in a smaller group session. They can brainstorm and then come back to the main meeting with fresh ideas. As you get started, the first thing you need to know as the meeting organizer is you have to create the meeting, add participants, and then send the meeting invite. From there, you can go into the meeting details to set up breakout rooms from the Teams desktop application. It is possible for the meeting organizer to set up breakout rooms in advance of the meeting or during the meeting. The first thing we're going to look at is how to do it before the meeting. So I'm going to click on breakout rooms and then select create rooms. The default option is two rooms. If you click on the drop down, you can see that it can go all the way up to 50 rooms. In this case, two rooms is sufficient for four people attending this meeting. Then I will click Add Rooms. The rooms will then be created, but keep in mind that if you are creating several rooms, it may take a few moments for this to happen. Now let's assign the participants to rooms. You can choose to let Teams do it automatically, or you can choose manually to do it yourself. Let's take a look at the option to do it ourselves and then click on Next. And now I can decide who to put in which room. All you have to do is put a check mark next to the name or names, click Assign, and select a room. And now I will assign the other participants to their room as well, and then I will click Assign to finish the process. Now I have room one and room two, each with two participants. I can go to the room settings and I can edit the rooms and give them a different name if I choose. Room one is going to be marketing and then I'm going to edit room two and that one is going to be the training room. And what I've done here is I'm setting up a scenario where I have one person from marketing and one person from training in each room so that they can collaborate together and see how the things that they work on impact the other team. Now that all of the participants have been assigned to their room, let's go to the right hand side of the screen and take a look at some additional options. If you click on the plus sign, you can add additional rooms. If you click on recreate rooms or the trash can icon, they will both delete all existing rooms and you can start over. Honestly, I haven't seen any difference between how these two buttons function. If you want to delete just one room, you'll need to go to the room settings on the room card and then select delete and then click delete room again. Now let's look at some settings that apply to all of the breakout rooms that you have created. You may have noticed that so far I have been calling everyone a participant. However, what you can do is you can assign a presenter to manage each breakout room. All you have to do is click the toggle to turn it on, select the drop down list, and choose who you want to be a presenter from the participants list. So I'm going to quickly select one person for each room. Next, you can set time limits, and this can be anywhere from one minute to 23 hours. The next two options control how participants move in and out of breakout rooms. By default, automatically move people to rooms is turned on. And what this does is when the meeting organizer opens the breakout room, everyone will go to their assigned room without having to click any buttons. The next option, let people return to the main meeting is turned off. However, I suggest that you turn this on if you have somebody participating in your meeting that is joining from the Teams web app. Now I'm going to close the settings by selecting the X at the top of the floating dialog box. Notice that it went from two participants to one participant, and that is because we assigned one person per room to be a presenter, and their status has changed from the team's breakout room perspective. Now that everything is set up, it's time to join the meeting as the organizer from the desktop app. 
and you can see that some of my colleagues have already joined the meeting as well. As the meeting organizer, I can go to the toolbar at the top of the screen and select Breakout Rooms. If we did not set up the breakout rooms before the meeting, we could have done so here from the Breakout Rooms pane. You can also manage the breakout rooms during the meeting. So for example, I might want to move one of my colleagues from the marketing room to the training room. Notice that we have the same options in the toolbar that were available in the pre-meeting details. I can create new rooms if I need to, as well as recreate or delete rooms. If we click on the settings icon, you will see that these are the same settings we discussed earlier in this video. If you want to, you can change the settings directly from the meeting. Everything is set up the way I want, so I'm going to click on open and the participants of this meeting will automatically move to their individual breakout rooms. The meeting organizer will stay in the main meeting. However, I've noticed that Diego is in his breakout room by himself because Jessica and Harry haven't joined the meeting yet. So what I can do as the organizer is I can hover over the word open for the room that I want to join, select more options, and then click join room. The main meeting is now on pause and I'm in a breakout room with Diego. Because I've joined from the Teams desktop app, notice at the top of the screen that this window is labeled marketing so that I can tell that I am in the marketing breakout room as compared to the main meeting, which is labeled Teams breakout rooms because that was the title that I gave the meeting invite. When I'm ready, I can click return and go back to the main meeting, which will automatically take itself off hold. Now let's take a look at what breakout rooms may look like for someone who has joined from the web app. Notice that there's no banner at the top of the window to let them know if they are in the breakout room or the main meeting. The return button is a good indication that you are in a breakout room. Now there are some other options that the participants can use while they're in their breakout room. If you click on the three dots, you will see that there is the option to record the breakout session. This recording is for this specific breakout room. Another option that participants have is the ability to share their screen. This ability to share the screen is controlled separately from the main breakout room. So the organizer can say no one can share their screen in the main room, but they're allowed to share their screen in their breakout room. Now I'm going to switch back to the organizer's view and show some different options. One of the things you can do is you can select the announcement icon and send a message to everyone in their breakout room. In this example, I'm letting everyone know that their breakout rooms will end in five minutes. This way, they know it's time to start wrapping up their conversations. The people in the breakout room will open up their chat pane to see the message that I have sent. We're gonna fast forward and say that the five minutes is up and as the organizer in the desktop app, I can click on the close button and pull everyone back into the main meeting room. The organizer can open and close breakout rooms as many times as they need to during their meeting. If you'd like to learn more about Microsoft Teams, please check out the playlist that's on the screen now, and I'll see you in the next video.